Hello, I'm Atubo George. I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, I know this is a great blessing. To I know, I know. Oh, I'm not asking you now. I know, I know. Because it's, it's some deep blessing for me also. So if I'm being blessed, how much more you for whom the word is coming? Praise God. Oh, glory to Jesus. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. See, my Bible has been there since. You know. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just go straight to the point. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, you can be a prayer person. And everybody knows you as a prayer warrior. But you're not making any progress in life. You must have seen people like that. Maybe in your church, the prayer warriors in our church. And hey, look at them. They seem like the jobless people. Ah, they seem like people that always need help. Okay? Is that what God planned for them? No. When you see them like that, it's because there are two reasons. Number one, they lack understanding. Number two, they lack discipline. When you see somebody who prays and prays, but you don't see the resultant effect in his life. Now, the resultant effect in his life is not because he must, he must have a big car. He must, no, no. You don't see him live. Uh, you know, the, the, the plan of God, like Paul told them in First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, I think, or verse 10, it says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that you, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Okay? Now that's where God is driving you at. That you live, you know, um, uh, Paul told Timothy, pray for all men, that you may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Please take note of these two scriptures. One, God is able to make, now that's on God's part, able to make all grace abound towards you. So anything you want, he has the ability to bring it to you. Okay. Then the other one says, pray for all men. So it still includes prayer. So that you, it says for kings, for all those in authority, so that you will live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Now, so your private life must be that kind that is quiet. What do you mean quiet? You don't bother people. Your life is not a bother. Your life is not a burden to people. That's what it means, a quiet life. Not, it's time for school fees. Everybody knows. Because their phone will be, text message will be flying from you. <laughs> eh, brother, it's that time of the year. Is that time of the month? Or, brother, you know, last year, God used you to help me. Uh, please, uh, please uh, uh, let God use you. I, I know, I know things are hard, but may God use you for my sake. You know what I'm talking about? That's not a quiet life. That's not a quiet life. A quiet life is a life where you're not a burden to anybody. Why? When God, I could I could be sabbatatida. God causes things to come to you with honor. With honor. Somehow, either God gives you the wisdom on how to manage yourself. Yeah, that kind of wisdom comes from Him. So even when you don't have, nobody knows you don't have. No, because God opens your eyes to wisdom. Hey, you can cut this here and cut this here. Like, oh wow, okay. Thank you, Lord.
without Jesus. So people just see you. Hey, how now? How is everything? Oh, fine. Ah, ah. How's, how far are you? How's, oh, I paid. I paid last week. Oh, wow, really? Oh, praise God. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, you, know, you people even get to that point. How do you, how do you get money? Like, God supplies. Because they know that they've been your friends. And if they've been your friends, you've never begged or complained to them. And they are watching you. They know, they, they seem to have an idea what you do. So if there are friends God will put around you. You are like, ah, this guy will check um, They are praying for you. <laughs> they are praying for you so that you will not come and beg. You understand what I'm talking about? So that quiet life is the desire, is God's plan for you. Peaceable. Peaceable. So when you live a quiet life, you realize that you have more long-lasting relationship with people. Because most times what, what destroys relationships is when money is involved. Okay. There, there are even friends you have for long, but the first time you ever do business with them that includes money and sharing of profits, you lose them. Why? Because someone comes up with, oh, I had these expenses that I had to, like, are you going to be bringing all that? Hey, but, but, they not realize that, ah, this person, I thought I knew this person, but man, you begin to withdraw from yourself. Money have divided a lot of friends. Yeah. So God says, a quiet, a peaceable life. When it gets to that point where you notice that something is becoming a problem, say, hey, no, 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 we shouldn't quarrel over this. You know what? You can have it. No, no, it's not like I'm, 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 oh, seriously. I know we shouldn't quarrel over this now. No, I, I can let you have it. Hey, are you serious? Yeah. I mean, I can let you have it. Why do people drag over those things? Fear. Fear. But now that fear has been disabled from your heart. Why? Because you have prayed. You have prayed. And when you pray, you see. You see. You will pray and you see next year. You will not have troubles next year. You will see it. Because the things that will cause you trouble next year, you are being instructed on how to handle them now. Oh dear Lord. I said, <sighs> so quiet, peaceable life in all godliness. So, not because you are secretly doing something wrong. There are people like that. Everybody thinks they are fine, they are, they are doing, but then they have some underworld things nobody know they, nobody knows about it about when people are directly involved and then they keep it so secret not that type not that type godliness in all godliness now so when god says he's able to make all grace and bound towards you he's talking about you living a quiet peaceable life in all godliness now that should be your dream in life. You shouldn't be living your life looking at what another person has. You know, and like, mm, mm. hey, this person has money. How do I get part of it? No, sir. No. Even as a believer, don't look at your church members and say, ah, this brother just won one big contract. Ah, hey. Yeah. Ah, one week, two weeks, he's not coming to tell you anything. Hey. Ah, they now think, oh, what do I do? What do I do? Mm. Let me announce that project now. Maybe when I announce the project, God will, God will touch him to give. No. 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 See, I am compared to the Fina. <laughs> Many years ago, I was trusting God for money. And I was, I was with my uncle then. Now, we were supposed to start a radio program. 
So the Lord have spoken to me about it many years ago, 2007, I think. So I was believing God for this money. And I think we needed 70,000 Naira then. I didn't talk to anybody about it. I was just like, okay, Lord, if you said it, then bring it to pass. So I negotiated with the radio station and they had given me a deadline for us to start on the Sunday, we must pay by Wednesday. So that day was on a Wednesday. Meaning, I have to get this 70,000 Naira today. So I was praying and praying and praying. I said, Lord, you said this thing. If this way, now, now, here's the point. The Lord spoke to me that you will start the radio program in October. First week I passed, second week of October I passed. Now we're in the month of October then. Third week. Now we were in the Wednesday. I will never forget that year. The October, I think the October ended on a Wednesday. But then the Wednesday before the, the third Wednesday of the month of October, then I thought of the fourth, maybe there was five, yeah, most likely when, if the month ends on that particular day, then that means that day was five on the weekend. You know? Anyway, the, the Wednesday before the last Sunday of the month of October. Because if we don't pay by that Wednesday, we will not start by Sunday, meaning we didn't start in October. So that's the situation I found myself in. I was praying that day. I said, Father, you know it's today. If this thing does not happen today, then <laughs> guess what? That same day, my uncle calls me and says, eh, please come. Um, I have some tithes that I want to send to some pastors and churches. And he gave me, yeah, it was cash. He gave me some money. 200 and something thousand, almost 300,000. And then different accounts. He said, please let me send it to this, let me send it to this. And I was, and I was watching him. <laughs> I was saying in my heart, like, doesn't this man, is it that God spoke to this man and he's not hearing him? <laughs> he's sending me. Now, the thought was there, like, I need money too. <laughs> this is what we want to do. I have never shared the vision of the radio program with him. Now, that's my principle. Okay. If I share so easily, you can say, oh, wow, take, go and do. But I didn't. Why? Because I want to be sure this is the Lord. So here I was, the very day I needed 70,000, and you are being given 200 and something thousand to go give. <laughs> they go, go pay into other. Now, not because, oh, this, no, to ministers, this money was going to ministry. So easily, I could have said, this ministry also needs money. You know what I'm saying? I was quiet. Oh, my heart was boiling, not in anger. I'm like, Lord, why are you doing this to me? It was the Lord I was thinking of. So I took it and I went, I, I will never forget that day. I went to the first bank. I was at the third, the last bank. I remember the bank, I will mention the bank. I was at the last bank. I had just paid the money into the account of the last bank. Now, you know, then we're not necessarily doing transfers like we do now. So you have to go deposit the money. And then I came out of the bank, walking to the road. I received a text message. I like it to my Tasha. <laughs> and the text message says, Pastor, I just paid a hundred thousand into your account. The number was unknown. So I'm like, ah, who's this person? So I called the number. The number was switched off. Like, ah, what's going on here? Who's playing this prank with me? I said, well, I'm around the bank vicinity. So let me check. So I went to the ATM and I checked. I had my card. No, it was not my bank, but you know how. So I, I slotted my card and I checked. Lo and behold. Now then, we're not receiving 
the debit or credit alerts by via text messages. So I sat there and I actually saw the money in my account like, whoa, <laughs> what's going on here? See? Like, well, why are you still imagining what's going on here? The registration is waiting for you. So I had to call them, withdrew the money, and I went to pay. Now, <laughs> Kanaya, that's God for you. So I came back home and I was telling my office, see what happened. And I was sharing the testimony. See what happened. And he went, wow. Why didn't you tell me? I said, no. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you. I remember and I said, okay, you know what? I want to pay for next month. <laughs> now that was fine. Praise God. That was fine. But you see, I wanted to be sure. What I'm telling you, I'm speaking to you as a minister. Never look at people's pockets and expect that God will bless you through them. Never do that. So you must learn to look up to God. You must learn to hang around wealthy people and not sincerely desire anything from them. It will help you be a better minister, even to them. And sometimes you realize, even when, when, you, when you have people who are always giving to you, giving to you. You know, sometimes you have, you have people like that who they, they, they kind of hear that you have a need. If by mistake they just hear that you have a need, you, you have to learn how to avoid them. Yeah. That's if you want to live your life trusting in the Lord. You want to, you want to learn how to be close to them yet avoid them. Why? So that they don't... Now, because it's so easy, because they are too used to it, it's so easy for even them to get into the flesh. And the moment they get into the flesh, see, you, you get into an arena where Satan can... Listen, the flesh does a lot of harm. Because that's Satan's arena, okay? He can tempt them. Oh, he can. Or he will tempt you. So you must learn how to create that discipline. And only prayer will do this for you. See, prayer keeps your eyes on God. There are times, there are times, you know, you pray and pray and pray, and then God will show you, say, I've commanded that person to give you more. Huh? Oh. There are times God have commanded, you look at the person, ah, this, ah, Lord, I can't say this guy, like, this person cannot do anything. Ah, I know this person, I know. I know his capacity. Oh, wait. And then the person shows up and says, ah, um, there's something the Lord spoke to me that I should give to you. So what is it? Where did you get this money from? Oh, I've had it for a while. I just, you know, kept it like, really? In your heart, like, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. As a minister, the only way you can live a life that is genuinely trusting in the Lord, in a, a quiet, peaceable life, you know, godliness. And that's your own part. That's the result of God being able to make all grace abound towards you. Oh, God, send me rich people in my church. Oh, Father, send me. You know why you pray that prayer? You're comparing yourself with another person. You think that person has rich people in their church. That's why they are doing so well. Not always the case. Oh, God can bless you beyond your church. That's how it's supposed to be. You are not supposed to be. Your life is not supposed to be according to the members you have in your church. No. Be a testimony to them. Be a testimony to them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for you.
the Spirit of God will truly build in you all the necessary ingredients you need inside you from your mind to your body to make for the expression of his kingdom in your life. I pray for you that you will know indeed what it means when David said that my head be anointed with oil. He said, Thou anointest my head with oil. That you will understand the meaning of that statement in your own life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Listen, I would encourage you listen to this message from one day. Just, just listen and listen again. And then don't forget to share it. Let other people get blessed. God bless you. I love you so much. Have the best weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.